Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. My name is Leila Latif. I am a teaching fellow at the University of Nairobi and a teaching fellow also at the University of Warwick. Thank you for the opportunity to speak about my paper, which is a work in progress. I would like to introduce the idea of Zakat into our discussions on how we can support a state to maximize its potential and capacity to mobilize all sources of revenue that are available to it in order to finance, for example, sustainable development goals. Zakat is the tax imposed under Islamic law on a Muslim's wealth. The tax on wealth is set at 2.5% and wealth is identified as savings reaching a specific threshold on gold, silver, shares, land, livestock, and in today's digitized economy, cryptocurrencies. The rate of Zakat on land and livestock differs and is progressive on the latter. Political decisions and academic scrutiny on thinking around alternative forms of development finance have not really looked at zakat, especially in the context of non-Islamic, secular or Muslim minority states. And the questions around the legal permissibility of applying religious laws as part of a legal system that, for example, is constitutionally committed to separating the state from religion. So the idea of fiscal activism which is the use of discretion in fiscal policy making is therefore to project the Islamic fiscal system onto a state's domestic revenue mobilization policy. This touches on Lumen's idea of autopesis, the existence of independent systems within a system whose interaction or interface is supported by common norms. Taking Lerman's theory and contextualizing it onto a fiscal law and a fiscal system like the one in Kenya, the idea of this fiscal um, activism explains the existence of autopedic fiscal systems, one faith-based and the other constitutionally constructed both existing independently of each other, one implemented as part of private law and the other as part of the state's legal system, but connected together through the Kenyan state's acceptance of legal pluralism. So whether legal pluralism in Kenya allows the government to tap into zakat is what is fiscal activism all about. When we look at the current state of fiscal affairs, in particular, the economic shocks resulting from the lockdown measures as a response to curbing the COVID pandemic, many states are adopting fiscal adjustment policies, in other words, austerity and budget cuts. And these budget cuts usually are targeted towards reducing expenditure costs on social spending. The need to move towards innovative development finance or alternative methods of financing development calls for an examination of whether zakat is well positioned legally and politically to be made available to the Muslim minority, secular or non-secular uh, states. This requires an investigation into the state's legal system and its approach to implementing Islamic fiscal law, the domain of Islamic states, right? But not of non-Islamic states. So by considering Kenya as my case study, I try to unpack whether fiscal activism to expand the government's domestic revenue mobilization policy based on zakat is or can be supported by the Kenyan legal system. We have got to start by asking two questions to appraise the extent to which my proposal that I let set out in my paper to support development finance with zakat can be considered politically feasible legally permissible and theologically valid. These questions are first, can religious funds be included as part of development finance? And two, would operational challenges arise from a law religion interface to finance development needs? An attempt to answer these questions should start by placing them first in a specific discipline, and then consider the extent to which the discipline supports an interpretation that favors including religious funds to finance development needs. So I thought of fiscal sociology and human rights as the disciplines within which these two themes under discussion, um, finance and development actually fall. Um, in development finance, redistributive tax arrangements are critical to progress towards achieving sustainable development. 
Under the Islamic fiscal system, such nexus is pegged on the collective redistributive action of zakat payers. Zakat takes the form of a religious contract between Allah, God, and Muslims to pay a tax on their wealth towards promoting the economic and social welfare of the poor in society. This is analogous to financing economic and social rights under human rights law. Development finance and human rights are therefore interlinked in the arena of policymaking, the shift towards sustainable development goals as the targets through which development, um, development needs can be met has pushed human rights scholarship to evaluate how fiscal systems approach development finance. The role of finance, therefore, uh, remains central to development. So when probing the definition of finance, it then becomes significant to construe the term from the human rights principle of maximum available resources to ask whether human rights law permits its doctrine to intersect with religious norms in designing a development finance model. Relatedly, what sort of operational challenges are presented in attempting to tie human rights with the two fiscal systems whose laws or sources of laws are ousted by the other. I try to dig a little deeper into this question in my paper. So policy proposals to include zakat as part of development finance can augur well, provided there's a strong theoretical or legal backing to it. This I find can be addressed through doctrinal analysis and legal, uh, legal theory uh, describing a state's legal system. The next step then is to look into development finance from a human rights based approach, scrutinizing the principles of progressive realization and maximum available resources as part of uh, the legal framework that allows the use of zakat to support financing human rights. So when we think of using zakat to finance human rights, we, we begin to find support in allowing, for example, the Kenyan legal system to rely on a faith-based fiscal system to, to simply to generate funds towards its domestic resource mobilization policy, which in turn will support the government to progress towards achieving human rights or meeting its uh, sustainable development goals targets. Applying human rights principles to bring together independent and separate autopedic fiscal systems under a common purpose allows fiscal activism to gain ground in a legal system that separates law from religion. The principle of maximum available resources suggests that available resources include not only the resources that are found within a state, but also those that are available from the international community through international cooperation and assistance. A state should do all that it can to be able to mobilize resources locally in order to have the funds to progress, um, to progressively achieve, for example, to finance the right to health. So the role of non-Muslim actors, the role of non-Muslim um, actors in, in contributing towards the mobilization of domestic resources of funds while it is not expressly set out under human rights law, resonates with the right to development approach. The right to development envisages a social legal order in which people are entitled to participate and contribute to economic and social development. The right to development offers new insights into scholarship on broadening the scope and definition of maximum available resources to consider the legal nuances that can potentially allow a state to accept to use zakat to finance human rights. What the principle of maximum available resources does not expressly set out is whether the obligation to use resources found within the state extends to zakat. A narrow understanding of the principle limits recognition of zakat. A realistic understanding of the principle incorporates the declaration on the right to development under which individuals and groups become active subjects in ensuring realization of human rights, which require a state to engage in fiscal activism to strengthen its fiscal capacity towards mobilizing development finance. Going by this, the idea of looking into Muslim money 
zakat by the Kenyan state, for example, or any other non-Islamic state allows the government to broaden its revenue base. And that is what we should be thinking about if we want to have an inclusive approach to development finance. So ladies and gentlemen, my dear listeners, the idea that I'm trying to pitch in my paper about the operational dimensions by looking at fiscal activism is such that we have a model under Islamic law, which is zakat. There is substantial revenue that can be realized from imposing the zakat tax. To what extent are we able to tap into zakat and use zakat to finance human rights? That is clear. It can be done in Muslim states. But what about a non-Muslim state? or a non-Islamic state, for example, like Kenya, decides to, stop, decides to tap into, into, into the proceeds of zakat and use the zakat, of course, with the um, permission of the Muslim community to help finance the right to health of all Kenyans who are poor, be they Muslims or non-Muslims. So in order to have this discussion, it is good to place zakat in the context of human rights and development finance and make the argument from a modern perspective to argue and say that yes, zakat is a source, it's a source of revenue that is available to help meet people's rights, to help meet people live um, good lives, improve their living uh, and their livelihoods as well. In essence, it is also trying to extend the makasid of Sharia, because one of them is to protect life. And in protecting life, we protect health. So if we use zakat to finance the right to health, it meets the threshold of the makasid. At the same time, if we try and bring in zakat into a non-Islamic state, it's also meeting the threshold of, um, of human rights law. So that's the contribution I want to make through my paper to be able to bridge the gap between Islamic fiscal systems and the Kenyan non-Islamic legal system so that the divide that we have, the bridge across law and religion, you know, is now diluted. And to some extent, we can use Islamic contribution in order to help recover the state's uh, fiscal or budget cuts that we have. Thank you. 